My name is Jack Waraga, and I'm born again by the grace of God. I am grateful to God that I'm here. I've never been here, so I was trying to find my way here in the morning. And you guys look beautiful. Nawambie lafiki yako unakawe ni msewangu. Bwana suwe sana. So I serve at ACK St. Augustine, Umoja 2. That is where I serve. And I thank God this morning for giving us this opportunity to fellowship um, the word of God together. So I'm married to Stella. We are blessed with three kids. And that is me. So I want us to go to the word of God. Um, because we don't have much time. I can see we only have maybe 15 or so minutes. So I want us to go to uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. That was read to us. And the topic for today is be ye filled with the Spirit. Tell your neighbor, be ye filled with the Spirit. And that is taken from Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18, where we are told not to be drunk with wine, but to be filled with the Spirit. Now, today is the day of Pentecost. Even as we peruse to go through uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, I want to say that today is the day of Pentecost. And maybe this is a day that we relate with the coming of the Holy Spirit in Acts chapter 2, from verse 1 to 13, we know what happened. And um, this was a, a festival in Israel that was celebrating the harvest of wheat. And if you want to see the details, you can go to Leviticus 23, those who are writing Leviticus 23, verse 9 to 21, and Deuteronomy 16, verse 5 to 15. This was part of some of the festivals that the, the children of Israel were celebrating. They had several of them, and this was one of them. So Pentecost means 50. They were celebrating uh, the harvest of wheat after the first fruits uh, festival, which they were celebrating this, uh, the, the harvest of barley. So I will not go into the details of that, but I want us to move first to Acts chapter 2, when the disciples were gathered together and they had been told by our Lord Jesus Christ to tarry in Jerusalem. If you read uh, Luke, uh, we shall read several verses. Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. Luke 24 and verse 49. Jesus told the disciples, I am going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. After the resurrection of Christ, now Jesus is about to leave the disciples and he is telling them, do not leave Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. And you look at John chapter 14 verse 26, he made the same promise that the helper is going to come. Put yourself in the shoes of the apostles or the disciples of Christ because they were many at that time. And you are told to tarry in Jerusalem, to wait eagerly in Jerusalem for the helper to come. What would you be waiting for? Bona suya sana. Nataka ujueke hapa ujiurize, ungekua ukigoja nini? You are told the helper is coming. Are you waiting for a person in a suit? Or, you know, what exactly do you think was running in the minds of the apostles? That until they are clothed with the power from on high. Bona suya sana. And we know what happened during the day of Pentecost when they were all gathered in one place and they were praying and the Spirit of God came down. There was a strong wind. I can imagine this beautiful building shaking and there's a, the sound of wind and fire could be seen. The tongues of fire could be seen on each one of them. It must have been a very, to some it was very scaring. But uh, that is what is recorded in scripture. Now, when we talk of the Holy Spirit, I don't know who the Holy Spirit means to you. It's a wide topic that we can handle uh, quite uh, elaborately for several days. But I want to ask us to have a little reflection of who the Holy Spirit, especially who he is to us personally, from a personal level, who is the Holy Spirit to you? And maybe some of us, or all of us, when we hear about the Holy Spirit, we are always thinking about the experience of the disciples on the day of Pentecost. And we are waiting for that time 
when we shall have a shaking we shall have some experience of power you know i don't know bwana sio sana sijui kama ukiambiwa roho mtakatifu mara yako ufikiria nini maybe it's when you are called here and i say see and you say the holy spirit has come bwana sio sana that is sometimes what we think about the holy spirit but it is important for us to be sober and seriously think exactly what the holy spirit means to us and who is he bwana sio sana if you are looking for that experience of pentecost for you to believe that you have the holy spirit in your life then you may live forever waiting bwana sio sana some of you could be could be you have an experience one time when i was a young young man growing up in Christ I think I was 2 weeks since I had given or allowed Christ to come and reign in my life and I had an experience I was somewhere around praying at night when everybody was asleep and I had spent several hours praying I was actually sweating I can remember the day and I was deep in prayer then all of a sudden I felt like I have been taken up mimi na peana personal experience nikwambia uwe na experience kama hiyo bwana asiye sana and i was so nikawa mtu ambaye ni ni mwepesi sana na nikasikia niko na furaha nyingi sana katika maisha yangu yani nilikuwa na furaha you remember this guy has spent several hours in prayer and then all of a sudden i started robo shakara baki rabaka zata rabuk bwana nikaanza kuongea na na ndimi i was alone i was alone That is back in 1995. I remember very well the experience. Bwana asiye sana. So for me, some of these experiences are very practical and they are able to tell us indeed what is written in scripture is true. I'm not telling you to have the same experience. Maybe each one of us could be have an experience like that one. Now, when we talk of the Holy Spirit, he is God himself. Bwana asiye sana. The Holy Spirit is God. And what the disciples are being told. Now, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will come and be with you. Now, that is why the Bible says that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And I want us to look at several scriptures that will be able to help us be able to understand quickly as believers that we have the Holy Spirit. I know some of us have been told if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Spirit. Some of us are being told if you don't experience you have not experienced this then you don't have the holy spirit. I want to discredit those kind of claims by reading the scriptures. Let us go to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. Before we go at, uh, into our scripture of uh, 1 Corinthians 12, I'll touch on it uh, in a short while. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians 1 and verse 13. Ephesians 1 13 says Ephesians 1:13 um he says and you were included in Christ when you heard the message of the truth the gospel of your salvation when you believed you were marked in him with a seal you are marked in him with a what a seal the promised holy spirit who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. What does that mean? When we heard the message of the truth and we believed in Christ, the Holy Spirit came to indwell us. And he is a seal. He is a mark or a seal guaranteeing that we are children of God. So the moment you believed in Christ as your savior, you become one who is sealed and the seal is the holy spirit and the holy spirit is a seal of ownership guaranteeing that you are a child of god you are a son of god behold what manner of love the father has given unto us that we may be called the children of god that is first john chapter 3 from verse 1 bona sui san that when we believe in christ Every one of us at the moment when we say yes to the Lord the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us. And I want us to go to Romans the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 
and verse 9. What does it say? Romans 8, 9. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Buona sana. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, you don't belong to Christ. So the moment you believed in Christ, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. And you become a temple of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit indwells everyone who believes in Christ. And therefore, anyone who is not a believer in Christ cannot understand the things of the Spirit because he does not have the Spirit of God within them. Buona sana. Them that do not believe in Christ. This is how they are. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. As for you, you are dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. So there is a spirit that is at work in those who are disobedient. There is a time that we were dead in sin. And we were captive of captive. We, are, we had been held captive by sin. But now we have become free in Christ. And so the Holy Spirit endures us because we are no longer under the rulership of the kingdom, uh, the, the evil one who rules the world. So one of the things that I want to bring home is that we need to know that we have the Spirit of God. And that the Spirit of God is a seal of ownership guaranteeing you and I are sons of God. Hallelujah. So nobody should make you think that you are a child of God, that you don't have the Spirit of God. You have the Spirit of God. But remember our topic is be filled with the Spirit. Shortly we shall see that. Now the Holy Spirit empowers us. When the disciples were in Jerusalem, and this marks the beginning of the church, when the Holy Spirit up, came upon them, they became bold. Acts 1 8 says that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the world. So when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, there is a desire in you to serve God with more passion, to serve God and to speak about Him to the world. It is important for us to know that the Spirit of God gives us power. That is why they were told, do not leave Jerusalem until you are clothed with power from on high. Now, 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, the spirit, the spirit that God has given us is the spirit of boldness or the spirit of power and love and the spirit of sound mind. So the spirit of God comes to endure us. And actually, uh, Philippians 1, 6 says that he who has begun a good work in you shall bring it to accomplishment. So when the Holy Spirit indwells us, he is making us to resemble the one who has sent him, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. Because the will of God is that we may grow to the full stature of Jesus Christ. So we must cooperate with the Spirit of God so that he is able to work in us. It is possible for us to have the Spirit of God, but the Spirit of God may not have us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, where we, we have read, we are seeing the giftings of the Spirit. And you operate in the giftings of the Spirit because the Spirit is within you. And just as the body has many parts with different roles, the finger has a different law from the eye, the ear has a different law, we have also been graced differently by the Spirit of God who dwells in us. Because when he comes upon us, he does not only give us the power to overcome sin, but he bestows upon us gifts for the sake of the body of Christ. Now, it is possible for us to operate in these gifts because the Spirit of God dwells in us, that the Spirit, but the Spirit may not have us. And that is what I'm talking about, being filled with the Spirit. Hallelujah. That the Spirit has you. In other words, you have submitted to the rulership of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because when you are told in Ephesians 5.18, do not be drunk with wine. When you get drunk, the wine takes over. Oh, 
kidogo <laughs> bwana asiye sana hatu hatuwezi sema kwani mnaogopa kama unakunywaga si ni kitu mzuri basi sijuiwe mkono unakunywaga unajivinjari kidogo yani huwezi kutuambia bwana asiye sana so when you take wine or the beer or whatever it is it, it, it at some level when we talk of drunkenness it takes over you siku moja tulikuwa na mchungaji fulani tukicelebrate our communion we had several services na those days na wakati tulikuwa tunakunywa kikombe moja unaambiwa shika hiyo shika hiyo pale mbele saa mchungaji alikuwa na jaza nyingi sana so ananiambia marizia ni mimi nilikuwa mwisho ana deserve ya mwisho marizia hii hiyo so we had three services na you can imagine nilikuwa na marizia yote then all of a sudden wakati tulikuwa service ya mwisho nikiwa pale wakati tunaimba wimbo ya ku recess nikasikia magoti imekosa nguvu nikashindwa niamke ama nitakuaje nikajua hii ile kawaini kwa sababu nilikuja service ya saa moja na siku nimekula kitu so niliji nilijisikiliza kwanza nisikie kama naweza tembea <laughs> bora asiwe sana so it is possible for you to be taken over by wine so be ye filled with the spirit instead of being taken over and being ruled and controlled by wine so what we are being told when we talk of being filled with the spirit it is that we need to be controlled by the spirit it is not about fearing things it's about deliberately allowing yourself to cooperate with the spirit who indwells you bwana asiye sana it's only that we don't have time there is a lot to learn about the spirit of god who dwells in us bwana asiye sana now if you want to understand that you can see acts chapter 6 verse 3 it is possible to have the spirit of god but you have not allowed him to truly have you but you have him uh, acts chapter 6 verse 3 says brothers and sisters choose seven men from among you who are known who are done what who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom we will turn this responsibility over to them there was a challenge about food serving tables and the disciples saying choose among you men who are full of the spirit and wisdom remember all of them in that place they were speaking in tongues all of them were but they are told katikati yenu chagueni watu ambao they are full of the spirit and wisdom bwana asiye sana can you be one of them who is full of the spirit and wisdom galatians chapter 3 you will see that paul is rebuking the galatians and he is telling them murianza na roho sasa mnatembea katika mwili. Why did you receive the Holy Spirit by keeping the law? So they were going back to something else. They yet the spirit of God indwells them because Paul is asking them, did you receive the Holy Spirit by keeping the law? And he is re- rebuking them and telling them, who has bewitched you? You foolish Galatians. Bwana asiwe sana. It is possible for us to receive the spirit and he indwells us we have indeed an assurance of eternal life in Christ because we belong to Christ but we have not allowed the spirit to have us that is why we are told in Ephesians chapter 4 that do not grieve the holy spirit that dwells in you bwana asiye sana do not grieve him Ephesians 4 verse 30 do not grieve the holy spirit because he is the one who worketh in us both to will and to do his good will according to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 13 because of time i want to say that the greatest evidence of the holy spirit at work in us is found in galatians chapter 5 and verse 22 the fruit of the spirit i know we pay a lot of attention on the giftings which are good for the church but as a person you need to know that the true mark of a christian who has the spirit indwelling them and is cooperating with the spirit is the fruit of the spirit which is love kindness gentleness goodness self control bwana asiye sana against such there is no rule there is no rule that is against goodness there is no rule that is against kindness there is no rule that is against love so a true christian is the one who is fruitful and that is what god has called us to do. so as we remember pentecost when god poured his spirit upon the fresh as he has prophesied in Joel chapter 2 Joel chapter 2 you will see that there was prophecy that was prophesied that the spirit of god will come upon all fresh there as remember that we need to experience the holy spirit as our own individually bwana asiye sana 
It is not about all those experiences that we talk about and the drama around it. It's about personally knowing the Holy Spirit and allowing him to work in you because he dwells in you if you believe in Christ. If you are not a believer in Christ, if you are just a person who is good and comes to church, it is important for you to reflect. Because the one who confirms that you are a child of God is when we receive Christ and the Holy Spirit comes to endure us. Don't allow yourself to be ruled by the spirit that rules the world today, the spirit of the devil. Let us pray because of time. We are grateful, our Heavenly Father, for speaking to us this day of Pentecost. I pray that from a personal level, each one of us shall desire to experience you. In Jesus' name we pray.